Welcome back to Watch the Booker Man and part 7 of this 10 part TNA 2009 series. We're booking the last two months of the year before Paul Heyman's arrival at the beginning of 2010. We had that strange incident last week with Kurt Angle. He was injured but in a very bizarre way. I'm pretty sure that's something to do with the conversion of the mod and explains that but he is only out for 13 days and will be working through the pain so he will be back for the pay-per-view in terms of being fully fit and if we need to he will be booked in matches before then. Impact starts with Christopher Daniels found out cold in the back and he is holding his head and claiming that Tomko did it. There are no witnesses and no proof that Tomko has been anywhere near Daniels but he is claiming that he is the latest victim of Tomko. AJ and Joe both been attacked by him in previous weeks and now Daniels finds himself out cold on the floor, the latest victim apparently. We then get Scott Steiner cutting a crazy unscripted promo, speaking about whatever he wants, but getting to the point that he has a partner for tonight in the mixed tag team match against Bobby Lashley and Crystal Lashley, Awesome Kong. This is the logical choice, it's what they did in real life, and if Steiner has the pick of any knockout, he's going to go for Awesome Kong, and this leads him to success. He lost to Lashley at the pay-per-view, and they have an upcoming match at the next pay-per-view, but Scott Steiner and Lashley brawl away, leaving Kong to dismantle Crystal Lashley. It goes just over five minutes, some decent performances in there. Crystal Lashley aside, and after the match, Steiner celebrates. Kong is pretty un impressed with him, having barely even done anything he fought with Lashley but it was Kong who was responsible for the victory Bobby Lashley checks on his girlfriend Crystal who is not moving of course if she steps in the ring with Awesome Kong it's only going to end one way as we go into a video package which is the first of a few I'm going to do I'm going to highlight the X division and the tag team division and maybe try and fit another one in about maybe an individual on the roster but the idea is just we're using the new marketing that Paul Heyman has brought in to present the knockouts as the toughest best most talented women's division in all the world and come in 2010 there is going to be even more spotlight on everybody in tna including those names that are on screen we then get an interview with odb who is talking about the confrontation between her and tara last week tara will be in action against tracy brooks tonight and odb says that she's going to have her eye on that match ahead of their match at final resolution tara comes in she is still unhappy with some of the things that odb said and wants to speak to her in private ODB refuses and walks off. Tara is still furious about that. She'll get to take her frustrations out against Tracy Brooks later in the night. Taylor Wilde picks up a win over Alyssa Flash in just over six minutes with distraction from the aforementioned Tracy Brooks, continuing their storyline again. Again, we're getting a weird thing here. Taylor Wilde sustained weight issues. I definitely think this is to do with the mod. I think or assume between 2013 and 2016, something with having injuries be in ring or out of ring and how they can come up changed because I've not seen that in any other mod and I'm assuming it's not weight issues as an injury I don't even know what that means in terms of how that could be an injury but that's irrelevant we get a promo from Joe it probably should be an interview but he's just saying that he doesn't believe a word Daniels is saying nobody's seen Tomko all night but Daniels is claiming that he's been attacked by him that doesn't matter because he's fighting Tomko tonight in the main event and he's got an idea as to how Daniels can finally prove himself after that match we then get a promo from Eric Young in the ring. He talks about the upcoming Feast or Fired match, which will contain some members of the World Elite. He then talks about his upcoming match with James Storm for the Global Championship, which he wins, making the first offence in this save. I don't know if it's actually his first offence of the Global Championship. Distraction from Big Robert ringside. He takes down Robert Roode from behind, and then he's able to do enough to assist Eric Young to a victory to end the hour. After the match, some members of the World Elite continue to lean to James Storm. Robert Roode tries to help, but is vastly outnumbered. The Motor City Machine Guns run down and join Beer Money. All four of them are able to get the better of Eric Young and the British Invasion and they all stand tall to end the hour as I said. AJ Styles is then interviewed. He doesn't know what to believe now. He's got Daniels at final resolution and that's all he can really focus on because all the hearsay between Tom Coe and Joe and Daniels, he's got to blank all that out. But after Joe is finished with Tom Coe tonight, AJ Styles is next in line. He wants him next week. We then get a match which has come from a rivalry in recent weeks between Black Machismo and Desmond Wolf. It's been a pretty one-sided rivalry with Wolf just running down Black Machismo, saying that he's a joke and doesn't belong in a TNA ring and isn't on his level. And this is proved during the course of the match with a comfortable victory for Desmond Wolf, a Tower of London enough for him to pick up a decisive win. Despite Machismo getting a little bit of offence in, it is a fairly one-sided and certainly a decisive clean victory. After the match, Wolf cuts a promo giving an update on his scheduled match with Kurt Angle at Final Resolution, supposedly the last match between them, but Wolf has had a change of heart and says that he is refusing to sign the contract for that three stages of hell match, or is it three degrees of pain? I got that wrong, I can't remember now. But 
Wolf saying that after what happened last week, he can't go through with a match. He's beaten Kurt Angle decisively twice and he doesn't want to face him again. Kurt Angle comes out, he is desperate to get the win over Desmond Wolf and cuts an impassioned promo saying that he can't continue unless he beats Desmond Wolf. He can't get over those two defeats. He believes that he's the best, the greatest wrestler in the world, but he can't prove that until he beats Wolf. As a result, he is willing to put his career on the line at final resolution. If he doesn't defeat Desmond Wolf, he will leave TNA. This, of course, appeals to Wolf, who has been trying to do that since day one. That is all he's wanted, to get rid of Kurt Angle, get him out of the way so he can have a clear path to the World Championship. And that is enough for Wolf to agree to put the match back on. He will sign the contract, Kurt Angle versus Desmond Wolf, pinfall being the first fall, submission the second fall, and Cage escape the third fall. If Kurt Angle is unable to get two of those falls, he will leave TNA. We then get an interview with Tomko, more of a vignette actually, he's explaining why he went for AJ Styles, he was sold out, he was cast aside and AJ Styles went on to greatness while Tomko was a forgotten part of his history despite the fact that Tomko helped AJ get to where he was and taught him so much. He's not going to speak about why he went after Samoa Joe and he's not going to speak about Daniels, his focus is on AJ Styles and he's more than happy to face him next week after he beats Joe in tonight's main event. We then get a segment with Abyss and Mick Foley coming out and they're challenging Homicide and Dr. Stevie. They don't expect those two men to be on the same page, but they do want to fight them at final resolution in a Foley's Funhouse match. Dr. Stevie says that he has been in contact with Homicide all week and he's happy to speak for both of them when he accepts that challenge for the pay-per-view. Abyss is happy about this and apparently invents a new catchphrase during the segment. Whatever he says is the closing piece of the segment as Tara defeats Tracy Brooks in a very short match. Alyssa Flash not involved but the ongoing storyline is still happening with her and Tracy Brooks but Tara doesn't need any outside involvement to win in very, very convincing fashion. After the match, she stands tall. The commentators put over the journey that she's been on since coming to TNA. She held the Knockouts Championship for just 10 days a few months ago. She beat Kong at the last pay-per-view and that is what really put her on the path towards ODB. She won the Battle Royal on Thanksgiving and that match will take place at final resolution. On screen, we get a promo from Team 3D, Rhino and Jesse Neal and they challenge Pope Hernandez, Morgan and Suicide to a 4-on-4 match. They think they're the more cohesive unit. The three men who beat them at Turning Point got lucky since they've got Jesse Neal they are unstoppable and they want a total elimination match a match where the winner comes only when every single member of the other team had been pinned or made to submit the main event is decent uh, Samoa Joe carrying it he defeats Tomko in a clean decisive finish laying him out with a muscle buster but after the match is where Joe's plan plays out he's got Tomko right where he wants him he grabs a hold of Tomko in the Kakina clutch style hold while having a microphone and he calls Daniels out to come and get his revenge on Tomko if Tomko truly did take him out at the start of the show he's going to want to come out and get his hands on him but there is no sign of Daniels 10 nights before his match with AJ Styles at Final Resolution. Daniels doesn't accept the invitation to take Tomko out. This leads into more suspicion. The commentators questioning why Daniels wouldn't do that. Nonetheless, Tomko does get some more comeuppance as AJ Styles comes out and lays into him, taking him down. Samoa Joe is more than happy to watch as Tomko gets beaten up again hit with a phenomenal forearm to end TNA Impact. AJ Styles will face Tomko next week, just three nights before his pay-per-view match with Daniels. Again, it's another decent show. We're continuing the build to Final Resolution, and then there'll just be one episode of Impact after that. Next week is the go-home show to Final Resolution. As I said, AJ Styles versus Tomko, and moreover that, the question marks over Daniels and how much involvement he has with Tomko. Obviously, he was attacked by him apparently at the start of the show, but then didn't want to get his revenge, so that suggests further as we have been doing in recent weeks that he is actually behind Tomko coming back and the two aren't at loggerheads like Daniels is trying to present but we will find out on either that show or on Final Resolution both shows coming very very soon.